Guys, today we're going to talk about AMD Ryzen and their XFR, or Extended Frequency Range. But before we get into that, I have uh, something to cover. In my video yesterday, I talked about their leaked prices. The AMD Ryzen 1300 and 1400X were listed and discussed in that video as 6-core, 12-thread CPUs. They're actually 4-core, 8-thread CPUs, much like the i7-6700, 7700K, that sort of thing. Except they're $170 and $200 for them respectively which is a lot cheaper than the 320, 350 respectively for the i7s from Intel, which is a drastic price reduction still. Actually, I think that Ryzen 5 1400X with uh, XFR, we'll get into that in a moment, is really going to be the sweet spot for a lot of gamers. I think that's going to be sort of the, the go-to for a lot of people. Let's get into XFR. What is it? It stands for Extended Frequency Range. Now to understand that, let's look at how CPUs work at a really high level. Basically, a CPU takes in power, takes in electricity, and puts it through a bunch of gates, and out it goes in a particular pattern, and that pattern determines the data at a really high level. Now, the power, since it's electricity going into it, as it's doing that, it produces heat. Now, you can increase the clock speed, number of cycles per second or hertz, and doing that, you put more power into it. Now, if you want to overclock something, it's going to produce more heat, typically. Um, and to dissipate that heat, you have to have an active cooler, like fans and a radiator sort of thing. Um, what XFR does is it actually detects how well the heat is being dissipated from it and based on how well it's being cooled it can tell that it has this thermal overhead say it's working really hard but it's only at 50 degrees celsius which is pretty cool it's got a little bit of overhead quite comfortably it might decide that hey i'm going to overclock myself to you know, a little bit more, and then I'm going to hit 60 degrees Celsius, which is still a comfortably low temperature as far as electronics are concerned, but that way you're going to get that extra power out of it, just because it decided that, hey, I've got, um, I've got the thermal overhead. Something that Intel has is Turbo Boost. Now, each CPU is already has built into it this, this clock speed that it will naturally overclock to. XFR is more intelligent than that. There is also Turbo Boost in AMD Ryzen, but XFR is beyond that. Every CPU in Ryzen will overclock to its certain Turbo Boost level, basically no matter what the cooling situation is, but XFR is designed for if you've got really good cooling and the CPU is like, hey, you know what? I can go even further than I was originally intended to without even you telling it to do it because it knows that it's going to be fine. The question, what does it mean to you? What is the significance of this? Well, for, for many of you, it's not going to matter. Not all Ryzen chips support XFR. Some of them do, and even for a lot of really intensive users, it's not going to matter anyway, because if you're a manual overclocker, someone who in the past with Intel chips has used, has taken advantage of the unlocked multiplier of Intel chips to overclock them, something that with Intel has required a K-series CPU, um, you can overclock manually. With Ryzen, all CPUs can overclock manually. That means if you are a manual overclocker, XFR probably isn't going to mean much to you because you're going to want to manually overclock anyway. You're going to be able to push manual overclocking further than XFR could because you might be comfortable at a higher range of temperatures. You might know how to get that stability out of it. You can experiment with it. You can push your CPU to the boundaries, whereas XFR probably isn't going to push it quite to the wire like you might be able to yourself. But for most people, what it's going to mean is it's basically accessible overclocking, ultra accessible overclocking even. Regular user is going to be able to buy an X series. The X series are the analog to Intel's K series. Well, all higher end CPUs have a turbo boost, 
all Ryzen CPUs can manually overclock and also have a turbo boost, but only the sort of higher end ones, sort of the equivalent to the i5-7600 or i7-7700 will have the regular or a K version. Much like here with Ryzen, there's an AMD Ryzen 5 um, 1500 or a 1500X or a 1700 or a 1700X and that X just means that XFR is unlocked and based on XFR it will man manu or it will automatically overclock based on your cooling. I want to know and what we're going to discuss a little bit here is how far XFR can take you. Now I have some suspicions and expectations but we won't really know until we have it in our hands and we can test. We can put some huge massive active um, custom liquid cooling loops on it and just cool the crap out of them and see how far they'll go on their own. But I have some suspicions of what we'll reasonably be able to expect. Now to consider that, let's look at the Ryzen 5 1400X. It has a standard base clock of 3.5 gigahertz with a turbo boost of 3.9 gigahertz and XFR that will take it above that. But how far? I think AMD has the Ryzen 5 1400X as the flagship device to directly counter the, the 6700K and the 7700K. Those are the i7 overclockable 350 US dollar CPUs from Intel, except that AMD's price is $200. But in order to compete with those chips, AMD is going to have to be able to clock a lot higher than 3.9. I think they're going to use XFR to compete directly with the 7700K. The 7700K overclocks turbo to 4.5 gigahertz, and that's really high. I think AMD is expecting most users AMD wants a user to be able to put a low-end heatsink on their CPU and it'll work fine, but if they put a really big, powerful um, heatsink on their CPU, I think they can reasonably expect people to hit that 4.5 automatic XFR turbo boost. I think that's going to be really critical to gaming and a lot of tasks that use really strong single-core performance. And I think that's what AMD is really aiming for with the Ryzen 5 1400X. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you think I deserve it, give me a like and a subscription, and uh, I'll see you at the next video.